Hi, Joseph Ward, the act of a supply. Going to take a look at index style separation. It's a type of halftone that's it's, it's known as F to FM half, half tones. And what uh, they are are squares or dithers, um, somewhat inconsistent. They're not like a perfectly round dot or a perfect square. Actually, some of them, uh, there's different patterns that you can pick and some of them do have perfect squares but uh, it's very erratic the way it's just it's a, a trick of the eye there's no ink on top of ink it's sporadically uh, it, it creates the tonal shifts uh, by um, interspersing the dots or squares or dithers uh, in a way that uh, will make the eye believe that they're seeing tonal shifts, but they're really just seeing a ton of dots. And uh, it requires a pretty specific image. I took a logo, uh, one of my logos, and I just hit it with some blood splatter, and then I clipped in this um, fire scene, and uh, it's perfect because it's pretty much uh, red through yellow, you know, including orange, and it's uh, can use a black and a white as well and uh, just get a very true uh, type of separation uh, halftone separation right here in Corel draw and uh, without a rip no no rip and still get that really nice tonal shift instead of showing you what wouldn't work and talking about what wouldn't work and all that I will when we get simulated process ones and I'll show you why they wouldn't be great for it. Kind of leaves a posterized look if there's too many colors or things in there. You have to really know uh, what you're dealing with. And so you always want to size. Uh, this pretty much goes for every kind of uh, half tone or process separation, but you always want to size your uh, images before you go into separation. Uh, unless it's a vector separation, I, I would even suggest to get things right in that before you go and create your uh, color separations. But for this type of uh, style of separation, index style, you want 150 dpi, and I just want you to see it's still very good resolution. And when you have uh, the type of printing that it is, it's, it's perfect resolution on garment. So. Um, I'm going to reduce this, uh, resample it to 150. Uh, it has to do with the size. Uh, it would be such such tiny little uh, dots if you you didn't do it this way. You're, if you're, the higher your resolution is, the smaller the dithering. So I'm going to hit OK. Um, hardly any change at all in the image. So the first thing I need to do is build a palette. and um, I'm going to do a black because command C, command V, uh, command D, 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 D. That might be too many, but it'll definitely be enough. So I'm going to grab these and put them right here. All right, the first one will leave black because. Um, like I said, it's going to be a red through a yellow tonal shift with orange also. Uh, but if I if I bring in a black as well, if my red isn't dark enough, it can intersperse the black and trick the eye into believing it's seeing a darker red, like in this area and some of these areas. And, and I'll kind of show you what I mean because the red I'm going to choose is going to be probably somewhere in here, but there will be areas where some black dots will um, will help with that tonal shift. So the next one, I'm going to go ahead and grab a red, and I'm going to grab one from right here. That's a pretty dark one, but it's still probably not that dark. Um, I'm going to grab an orange. Uh, right there. I actually think I need to grab a different. Red here, yeah. Let's grab that one, and then I'm gonna grab a yellow. Oh, it didn't change. Grab a yellow, and then I'm going to do a white for 
the this area and this area um, we'll get rid of this area but it's good to do it for this purpose here um, it'll keep it clean by doing that now I don't need this one so then I'm gonna select all of this and I'm gonna go to my uh, color palette manager if you want to get that you go to windows dockers color palette manager now the second one up here creates a new palette I'm gonna call this one uh, logo set and I actually don't think you can have anything but letters and numbers no spaces um, and I'm going to save uh, just put that palette in here um, for some reason it has two blacks in here so let's let me edit it real quick I don't need that anymore so I can turn on black anyway uh, so I'm going to edit color that's a RGB. That's an RGB, but they're both the same. So I'm going to click that one. Delete the color. Yes, I'll delete it from the palette. Now it has the ones that I want there. Okay. So I don't need this anymore. Delete it. I've got to select this. Um, go to uh, bitmap mode. Palette at 8 bit. And it's going to make the conversion. I need to pick my logo set palette. And it made that conversion. I've got a Jarvis. You can do a Stooky. You can do Floyd Steinberg. Um, I like the Jarvis uh, dots. I'm going to click OK. Now it looks... It doesn't render grace as much like most bitmap stuff within here now all I have to do is change the mode and you'll see how it would be on press still perfectly the same but when you see me pull these separations you'll see that it is going to pull the, the squares or dots now the next thing I need is another really powerful tool within Corel draw and you can do you can do the same type of uh, separations that you do in Photoshop with this tool so it's called the bitmap color mask and it's up there in the dockers as well so now i'm going to um, duplicate this page uh, with layers and contents and i'm going to do it uh, i don't need a white but i need my main image so i'm going to duplicate it four more times from from I'm going to keep my original and then four more times. So one more time. Say okay. Now I'm going to go to page two because I want to leave my original on page one. So on page two, I can begin to pull my different colors and then I'll show you how to go back and change them into films. So we want to check this box grab this we're going to hide everything but the color we want to leave we're going to leave our black um, behind on this first one so I'm going to grab the eyedropper and oh I don't have my image um, got to have it selected but I have it selected now you can see the colors change now there's my red click on it then I'm going to check my next one grab my eyedropper again Find my yellow, my yellow. Hide that yellow. Um, again, grab it. Might as well pull this white out from the image. Oh, I did on the wrong one. Let me. Oh, that's fine. I'll do this one. I'll get the orange. So I'll get the orange. Now I'll click here, click here, and get my yellow. Okay, click. All right, now if I apply this, it's going to mask everything but leave the black that it has in the image behind. So I'm going to click, 
there's the black. So we're going to rename this black and say OK. Then we're going to go to our next page. We have all of this already. We're going to pull our, we'll just go from the top to the bottom. So we'll click on our red. We'll, we'll click on it. We'll go here. Oh, we don't have it selected again. I got to remember to select that every time. So we'll go here. Oh, the black one could be hard to actually to grab because there's so little of it in there. Oh, I found some. Look at that. So there we have our red because we're hiding everything but the red. So we'll leave the red behind and we'll go ahead and name this page red and say OK. Now we'll go to our next page. I'm going to grab it this time. Remember to grab it. Now, um, we can, we don't need to worry about pulling our white. Um, yeah, we're not going to worry about pulling the white. We'll just take it out every time. So we'll go to it. We want to pull our orange. So we'll go to our orange and we'll grab our red and then we'll apply. Now we have our orange. We go down here. We rename it. Orange. And we say, OK, we go on our last page and we want our yellow. So let me grab it. I'm going to click on this, click on here. And now I just need to grab the orange to replace the yellow and say, OK, we only have this little bit of yellow down here. OK, so there we there's all our pools. We're going to rename this um, yellow. Continue. Now I'm going to insert a page after, and on this page I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to build it back. So let's do uh, Command C. Go to page six. Command V. All right. Go to orange. Command C. Go to page six. Command V. Go to red. Click on it, Command C. Go to page six, Command V. Go to our black, click on it, Command C. Go to our page six, Command V. So there you have. Um, there you have the uh, sort of build up to know you've got everything but let's go back and uh, and like I said it's going to look like this on press that's the rendering of the dots in Corel uh, this is sort of already a black channel but what you want to do to these is uh, mode black and white line art say OK, then you're going to left click on your clear, right click on a black. Go to the next one, click on it, bitmap, mode, black and white, line art, uh, left click on your clear, right click on a, a black. Uh, select it, mode, black and white, Line art, left click on clear, right click on, oh, actually, must have done it wrong. Yeah, there we go. I clicked on both at the same time. Uh, one more to do. I don't have it selected. Select it, mode, black and white, line art, okay. Uh, left click on clear, right click on black. So there's your films set up in Corel Draw. Quick way to get a tonal image, bitmap image, scraper skulls, fire, um, 
we'll look at some different things. This has actually been wrapped up in 15 minutes, so I'm going to keep it short tonight. Uh, thanks for watching. Joseph Worthy, Activist Supply.